Hello. Protein chains are linear sequences of amino acids connected by peptide bonds. Sometimes covalent bonds form between the chains, creating crosslinks. Probably most of you are familiar with disulfide bonds as crosslinks between linear protein chains. In addition to disulfide bonds, first glance will alert you to the presence of five other kinds of covalent protein crosslinks. If you've never heard of most or some of these kinds of crosslinks, don't worry. First glance will provide you with explanations and their atomic structures, and also examples of proteins that contain these kinds of bonds. First Glance has extensive documentation, including the methods that it uses to detect these protein crosslinks. As you'll see, First Glance provides you with tools to help you decide whether putative crosslinks that it reports are real. If I'm talking too slow or too fast, click on the gear wheel and then adjust the playback speed. This is the front door to First Glance. Use the link down below this video to find First Glance and then bookmark it. Our example will be 2XI9. So I'll enter 2XI9 in the slot right here and press Enter. A new browser tab opens and it says right away, unusual protein crosslinks may be present. OK to list them. I'll press OK. Now we see a list of crosslinks indicating one isopeptide and one thioester. Before we move ahead with that, uh, if you've used First Glance, you know that up here in the Molecule Information tab is a wealth of information about this particular molecule not only what is shown in this panel, but the links here go to uh, information in considerable depth. All right, so next we'll click on isopeptide crosslinks. And this tells us that there appears to be a bond between the zeta nitrogen of lysine 297 and the gamma carbon of aspartate 595. If you'd like to review what an isopeptide bond is, click on this link here. This is typical of first glance. There's a lot of explanatory information available. When you click on this, it goes to a proteopedia page that shows you in chemical atomic detail what is an isopeptide bond and actually provides an interactive example over here that you can rotate and examine in detail. And if you stop spinning and touch an atom here, it tells you what atom you have touched. Now we'll return to first glance, and I want to point out that also typical of first glance, if you scroll down in this help panel, there are many examples of molecules that have isopeptide bonds. So to explore the one that first glance uh, has suggested here, we'll click on this link, a little movie plays, showing you where the putative isopeptide bond is in the structure and zooming in and allowing you to examine it in atomic detail. I'll turn off spinning, and these thin blue lines are backbone traces, and we see that along this backbone trace, we have aspartic acid 595. Here are the main chain atoms. Here's the side chain. Now, aspartic acid, of course, normally has 
two oxygens on its side chain. But we see here that one of them is a nitrogen, and that nitrogen comes from a different section of the backbone trace, from lysine 297, whose side chain ends in a nitrogen, which has formed a peptide bond between the two side chains of these amino acids, that is, an isopeptide bond. Okay, this looks like an isopeptide bond. It looks legitimate, nothing suspicious about it. How do we verify if it's real? Well, over here we have a number of convenience tools, one of which, by the way, is to turn on slab, which hides things that are in front of and behind this bond, making it a little easier to see. But the most important one for validation is to look at the electron density map. You simply click on that link and it uh, alerts you that this will appear in a new tab or browser window. You see the isopeptide bond, it zooms in on it, and then shows you the electron density isomesh or map around the atoms of interest. By the way, if you're not familiar with electron density maps, you can read this little explanation over here. The electron density map is the primary result of an X-ray crystallography experiment on a protein crystal. What the crystallographer gets, I'm clicking hide atoms here, is just the electron density. And the crystallographer then has to build an atomic model that fits this density. So the question we're asking is, does the electron density, is it consistent with the model built here? And you can see that yes, each atom in this isopeptide bond region is surrounded by a very clear, nice electron density. So we can conclude that this appears to be a real isopeptide bond. And you would expect to have this kind of good quality electron density map fit to the model at the resolution of 1.9 angstroms here. If you'd like to review what resolution means for crystallographic experiments, just click on this link. And by the way, if we go back to first glance, we see that it says here resolution 1.9 angstroms and characterizes it that many atoms will be clearly seen. If you want more information, click on this question mark. We can contrast this nice example with another case where a putative isopeptide bond is not real. To do that, we'll go back and look at another molecule, namely 4-REA. So I've entered 4-REA in the slot here. I'm clicking Submit. Here comes the molecule. Ah, it says there may be crosslinks. And it says uh, one isopeptide crosslink and one histidine tyrosine crosslink. Well, let's take a look at that putative isopeptide crosslink. We'll click on it here. We get the little movie that shows us where it is, zooms in, and let's look at it. And this time I'll click slab here to help right away. You notice right away if you're familiar with uh, these atomic stick representations, that this doesn't look right. There's a kind of, I'll zoom in a little bit here, I'm using my mouse wheel to do that. Between the um, well first of all it's not even between side chains. Here we have a glutamine and it is the side chain of the glutamine but it clashes with the main chain atoms of lysine 406, and here's the side chain sticking out, so already that makes no sense at all. Furthermore, you see a kind of wad of unrealistic covalent bonds here. It should be pointed out that JSMOL, the program that renders the molecule in first glance, assigns or draws, let's say, sticks wherever two atoms are the right distance from each other for a covalent bond. The information on where covalent bonds are in the model is not in the model data file. 
it's up to JSMOL to figure that out. In this case, the atoms are in uh, inappropriate places, and so we get this kind of a mess. Let's look at the electron density map. Notice the resolution here is far worse than our other example. Here it's 3.8 angstroms, which is far worse than 1.9 angstroms. And we see that the map here doesn't fit the model well at all. We see parts of the model sticking outside the map here and here. And we don't really see enough of the map here, so I'm going to extend the map out to five angstroms. The default is three. We can see a little mo bit more of it here. Um, but we can see that this certainly does not support the existence of an isopeptide bond here, which in any case was modeled in a way that would be completely unrealistic. That concludes our little tour of how First Glance in JML detects isopeptide bonds and other kinds of protein crosslinks, and how you can explore them and decide whether or not they are real.